Alleluia, Alla la 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 la, Alleluia, Alla la 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 la. Well, Alleluia, and give your neighbor a hug. Give him a hug next to you. Give your neighbor a hug and sing this song. Give your neighbor a hug. Give him a hug next to you. Give your neighbor a hug and sing. Well, singing, Alla la 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 la, Alleluia, Alla la la. Alleluia, Alla la 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 la, Alleluia, Alla la 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 la. Well, Alleluia. Well, I hear that I did almost that whole song without my microphone being on. And you know something? When you don't turn your microphone on, it doesn't work. You discovered that at home. I am sorry about that. We have one less person who's helping us today. So somebody's on vacation. So usually there'd be somebody standing right in front of me saying, turn your microphone on. But we don't have that person. So it took a while for me to get that message. So I am really sorry about that. Well, we're going to do another little song. First thing I'm going to teach it, and then I have a helper who's going to help me. But the song goes like this. It's a very simple song, and it's a song about God's love being like a water fountain. Not like a water fountain maybe that you drink out of at school, but like a fountain like in the mountains where water is just bubbling out of the ground. So, and the songs, the song goes like this. Um, okay, so it goes. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Let's do it one more time, because I'm forgetting how to play it. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Well, and this song has hand motion. So, Estella, I'm going to have my little helper, Estella. So, remember, Estella, look at the camera. Don't look at yourself on the big screen. Okay, so Estella has a, a mask on because we're supposed to be wearing masks. I don't wear it now just not because I'm thinking, oh, I don't need a mask. I have a mask too. But just it's harder for you to hear me and to see what I'm saying if I have a mask on. So that's why I'm not wearing it. But as we sing the song, there are hand motions. And Estella is going to show you the hand motion. So I'm going to go real slow so you can learn them too. So it goes like this. Deep and wide. Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Let's try that. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Now a little faster. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Now super fast. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Well, thank you, Estella. You can go and sit down now. All righty. There is a deep fountain of God's love for all of us. So now... We are going to think about this story. Remember, it's a story about a little girl named Ruby Bridges. And you'll remember, so she was a girl who was living in a place called New Orleans, which is in a southern city in the United States. And she was picked to be one of four African-American children who would start going to a school that had only white children in it. Because back in this time, and children would go, like there would be children that white kids went to, and there were, and, or there were schools that white children went to, and there were schools that black children went to. So they were kept separate that way. 
But then we said, you know something? That is not a good idea. That's not the way it should, should be. Children should go to school together. So they picked four African-American children or four black children who would start going to schools that had only white children in them. Three of those African-American children went to one school, but Ruby Bridges, all by herself, went to another school. So she was the only African-American child who would go to this school. And remember, when she would go to school, every day there were people standing outside the doors, and those people were yelling at her. They were booing her. They were saying terrible things because they didn't think that black children should go to school to the same schools that white children were going to. So they were saying terrible things to her. So, and she had to, they were so terrible and it was so scary that actually it was like, um, almost like army people had to be going with her, taking care of her, protecting her. So now we're going to keep reading her story. And we're going to, you're going to see on the screen what the pictures look like as I just read. It says, The white people in the neighborhood would not send their children to school. When Ruby got inside the building, she was all alone except for her teacher, Mrs. Henry. There were no other children to keep Ruby company, to play with and to learn with, to eat lunch with. Can you imagine if you went to school and you were the only child who went to school? There were no other kids in school. Not one other kid. You were the only kid in school. That's what happened to Ruby Bridges. She went to school and she was the only kid in the whole school. But every day, Ruby went into the classroom with a big smile on her face, ready to get down to the business of learning. She was polite and she worked well at her desk, Mrs. Henry said. Mrs. Henry is her teacher. She enjoyed her time there. She didn't seem nervous or anxious or irritable or scared. She seemed as normal and relaxed as any child I've ever taught. So Ruby began learning how to read and write in an empty classroom, an empty building. Sometimes I would look at her and wonder how she did it, said Mrs. Henry, how she went by those mobs and sat here all by herself and yet seemed so relaxed and comfortable. Mrs. Henry would question Ruby in order to find out if the girl was really nervous and afraid, even though she seemed so calm and confident. But Ruby kept saying she was doing just fine. The teacher decided to wait and see if Ruby would keep on being so relaxed and hopeful or she would gradually begin to wear down or even decide that she no longer wanted to go to school. What would you do if you were the only child going to school? Would you start feeling sad after a while? Maybe you would say, you know something? Nobody else is going to school. I don't want to go to school all by myself. So the teacher's wondering what Ruby is going to do. Then one morning, something happened. Mrs. Henry stood by a window in her classroom, as she usually did, watching Ruby walk toward the school. Suddenly, Ruby stopped, right in front of the mob of howling and screaming people. She stood there facing all those men and women. She seemed to be talking to them. Mrs. Henry saw Ruby's lips moving, moving, and wondered what Ruby could be saying. The crowd seemed ready to kill her. Wouldn't that be super scary? The marshals were frightened. The marshals are like the army people. They tried to persuade Ruby to move along. They tried to hurry her into the school, but Ruby wouldn't budge. Then Ruby stopped talking and walked into the school. Look at that picture of Ruby there. Look at her standing with all those people yelling at her and they're shaking their fists and they're super scary. But she wouldn't move. She just stayed right there. But then she stopped talking and she goes back into her school. When she went into the classroom, Mrs. Henry asked her what happened. Mrs. Henry told Ruby that she'd been watching and that she was surprised when Ruby stopped and talked with the people in the mob. Ruby became irritated, which means Ruby got a little bit mad. I didn't stop and talk with them, she said. 
Ruby, I saw you talking, Mrs. Henry said. I saw your lips moving. I wasn't talking, said Ruby. I was praying. I was praying for them. Every morning, Ruby had stopped a few blocks away from school to say a prayer for the children, for the people who hated her. This morning, she forgot until she was already in the middle of the angry mob. When school was over for the day, Ruby hurried through the mob as usual. After she walked a few blocks and the crowd was behind her, Ruby said a prayer she repeated twice a day before and after school. Please, God, try to forgive those people because even if they say those bad things, they don't know what they're doing. So you could forgive them, just like you did those folks a long time ago when they said terrible things about you. Do you know what she's talking about when she says a long time ago when they said those terrible things about you? She is thinking about the story of Jesus. It says that when the, the people put Jesus on a cross, that one of the first things Jesus said was, he prayed too. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. You know, what an amazing prayer coming for G from Jesus that he would pray for the people who put him on a cross, who did terrible things like that, that he would ask that God would forgive them. But how amazing that a little girl, this little girl named Ruby Bridges, was able to pray that for people who were saying terrible things to her, who were cursing her and shaking their fists and threatening her. And here this little girl was praying for them. Then I'll just read a little bit about the end of her story. Later that year, two white boys joined Ruby at the Franz Elementary School. Their parents were tired of seizing, of seeing the boys get into mischief or trouble around the house when they could have been in school and learning. The mob became very angry when the first white children went back to school. But those boys were soon joined by other children. We've been sitting back and letting our children get cheated out of an education because some people try to take the law into their own hands, one parent, one parent said. It's time for us to fight for the side of law and for our children's right to go to school and get their education. They all did get their education. Ruby and a growing number of boys and girls who went to school with her. By the time Ruby was in second grade, the mobs had given up their struggle to scare Ruby and to defeat the federal judge's orders that New Orleans schools should have children of all races in the same classroom. Year after year, Ruby went to the Fran School. She graduated from it and then went on to graduate from high school. What an amazing, brave little girl. You know, and this is a story that tells me that one of the things that made Ruby the kind of girl that she was, was she knew God's great love for her. She knew that what we just sang about, that fountain deep and wide, that fountain of God's love was bubbling up in her. And even when people were saying terrible things to her, she had a fountain of God's love. You know, I want you also to have a fountain of God's love in you. To know that no matter what is happening, no matter if we are scared because people are getting sick and our country is having some troubles, that you will know that the fountain of God's love is inside you. And that fountain is stronger. It, it just lasts forever and it's bigger than anything else that is going on in our world. Well, we're going to sing another song. So this is, will be another new song. This is a nice little, just a sort of a little kid song called Praise Him, Praise Him. And it goes like this. Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. You sing that with me. 
Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Now we'll sing thank Him. Thank Him, thank Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Thank Him, thank Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Now we'll sing love Him. Love Him, love Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Love Him, love Him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Do you think that Ruby Bridges loved God? I think she did. And the love, that love for God came because God loved Ruby Bridges. God loves you. God loves every one of us. No matter what, God loves us. So let's pray together, okay? So pray with me. Dear Lord, dear Lord, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you love me so much, so much. Your love is... Your love is deep and wide, deep and wide. Please help your love, please help your love to make me strong, to make me strong, and to show your love and to show your love to others, to others. In Jesus' name I pray, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, that's it. We, I'm glad you are with us today. Sorry for sort of some of the problems that we were having. I'll try to do a better job next week. I'm going to send you out and send you on your way with Deep and Wide. Here we go. Can you do the hand motions with me at home? Deep and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide. Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. One more time. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. We'll have a great day this week and a great week. It's July the 4th this weekend. Have a fun and a safe weekend. Goodbye now.